This is a video about why defining atheism as a lack of belief in God is a bad idea. It also has a better definition of atheism in it. It's in the next bit after these titles. <laughs> Here, roughly, is how I define atheism. Where G is the proposition that God exists, and where a doxastic attitude is a belief about a proposition, and where zero means certainly false and one means certainly true, then my definition of an atheist is X is an atheist if and only if X has doxastic attitude A to G and a expresses a probability of less than 0.5. So, on this analysis, there is no possible situation in which something has an attitude towards the proposition God exists, that puts its odds at less than 50%, but wherein that thing is not an atheist. Nor is there a situation in which a thing is an atheist, but wherein it does not put the odds on God's existing at less than 50%. Thus we have both the sufficient and the necessary condition for being an atheist. Hurrah! Now, two things recommend this definition. Firstly, it does not entail absurdities, like atheist rocks, because rocks do not have doxatic attitudes, beliefs, about anything, and are not then, by this definition, atheists. This is a virtue it does not run absurdly counter to our common use of the word atheist to mean an intentional agent. Secondly, it does not try to evade the burden of justification. An explicit attribution of likelihood is a necessary condition for being an atheist. Look, it's here in the second conjunct. As atheists, therefore, we are not, on this definition, shirking our responsibility to participate in the asking for and giving of reasons, which is fine by me, as I didn't sign up to be a hypocrite. The lack of belief definition, on the other hand, goes something like this. X is an atheist if and only if X does not have A to G wherein simply not having a doxatic attitude to the proposition God exists is both necessary and sufficient for being an atheist. On this definition, rocks are atheists, and thus a consequence of adopting it is to adopt the absurd. Furthermore, according to George H. Smith, who is responsible for the implicit atheism into which this lactheism transubstantiates under critical scrutiny, when the atheist is seen as a person who lacks belief in God, it becomes clear that he is not obligated to prove anything. How very convenient. Shitty consequences, shitty motivation. Which is why I'm so disappointed by the number of otherwise intelligent people who are willing to rub themselves like randy dogs on the leg of this silly definition. I think we can do better than this. I'll conclude with some common objections to what I've argued here, along with my replies to them. Adopting your chauvinist definition will exclude implicit atheists like infants and uncontacted tribes in the Amazon. This is an appeal to pity of some kind, one that rests on a strange Manichaean dichotomy wherein everything that exists is either theist or atheist and therefore of darkness or light. Therefore, according to this rather strange inversion of ancient Persian theology, to deny the uninitiated atheism is somehow to condemn them to damnation. Oddly enough, as a naturalist, I don't buy into any of this twaddle. The ist in atheist means that it doesn't apply to rocks. Ooh. If you were to put that into the working part of the definition, where it belongs, you'd get this. X is an atheist if and only if it is possible that X has A to G and X does not have A to G. To G. But if X were an infant or a member of an uncontacted tribe, 
then it is not possible for x to have a to g, either through having insufficient cognitive faculties to construct the appropriate attitude or through unfamiliarity with the conceptual content of the proposition. So babies aren't atheists after all. Unless you want to be more specific about what kind of possibilities you're on about. Given the common usage of the term atheist, only a pen to deploy it to rocks. Now you don't want to be a pedant, do you? Yeah, but you calling me a pedant doesn't mean I'm wrong though. It's just an ad hominem. But, but if you can justify our atheism, that means the nasty beasts are going to shift the burden of proof. <laughs> only if we let them. As you can probably tell, I'm exasperated by the popularity of the lack of belief definition. But I hope this video has given you some idea of why it ought to be rejected and what kind of definition ought to replace it. Thank you for listening.